All right, today you are going to work on adding and subtracting numbers in scientific notation. Let's start with an easy one. This represents 400 and this represents 500. If we add those together, it is 900. So we can get that by doing four plus five and keeping the two zeros or keeping the same exponent. Let's try that. So for this one, if we have the same exponent, then we keep the exponent and we add the coefficients. So five plus three would be eight. And then if we write it in standard form, we would shift that decimal three to the left and we end up with eight thousands. All right, so for this one, we have the same exponent. So we're gonna do nine plus eight, which is 17. But that's not in scientific notation. We have to have to have, to have a decimal after the first digit. So if we wanted to move the decimal for this way, but now we're further to the left, we'd have to move the decimal five times to get to the same spot. So we're increasing the exponent by one. And then if we wanted to write that in standard form, you would just take that decimal and move it five to the right and get 170,000. All right, let's see exit drawing, there we go. So if we looked at this one, oh no, the exponents are not the same. Okay, let's just look at kind of what this means. This first part, woo! Let's see, this first part means 200. This means 3,000. So if we add them together, it's 3,200. Okay, so then this is what we would get. So notice in our final answer, we have a three as the exponent. That is matching the higher exponent from the original equation. So our goal is to convert to the higher exponent and then add or subtract. Here's an example of how to do that. All right, so for this one here, four is the higher exponent. So we're gonna keep this part here, but we're gonna change this part here. If we were wanting to move the decimal Actually, let me try to undo that a second. Nope, won't let me. If we wanted to move it one, two, three times to the right, and we now put a decimal here, we'd move it one, two, three, four, and we get to the same number. So these two things are equivalent. They look different, but they're the same. But now when we have an exponent of four, we can add these two things together. Four plus 0 0.3 is 4.3 times 10 to the power of four. So we get to keep that exponent of four. And then we could just move that decimal four to the right to get our final answer in standard form. All right, let's try this one. These ones are negatives. So be very careful. The one closer to zero is the bigger number. So negative two is the bigger number. So we're gonna keep that one here and we're gonna convert this one to have a negative two exponent. So we're shifting the decimal one to the left and making the exponent one greater. So then we can add five and three tenths together to get five and three tenths times 10 to the power of negative two. And then we can convert that to standard form. All right, so if we have this one here, negative four is the greater number. So then we would convert this one to negative four by shifting that decimal one to the left because then we'll have to move more times. All right, so then five plus 0.3 is 5.3 and we keep the exponent of negative four. All right, that would be the answer in standard form and now I just realized there isn't anything with subtracting. So I'm just gonna redo this one and I'm gonna write a minus seven, right, and I'm gonna actually change this to a negative two. All right, let's get rid of that part. So we could keep five times 10. No, we could not, that one's now the smaller one. Okay, so this one's the bigger one, so we don't wanna keep this one. So we're gonna keep the minus seven times 10 to the power of negative two, 
and we have to change this one to a negative 2. But because I changed the exponent by 2, we're going to shift the decimal to the left 2 times. So this would be 0 0.05. I'm going to shrink that a little bit so it will fit on one line. Okay, so now we'd have to do 0 and 5 tenths minus 7. All right, so let's say we have 5 cents and we try to spend $7. We're going to be in debt $6.95. All right, then we have to keep that same exponent of negative 2. So if we have this, I'm just going to copy it down here a second. So for decimals here, it's going to move 1, be before the 6, and then it's going to move another time and be, uh, we'll have to add that 0 and then add a final zero at the beginning and make sure the whole entire thing is negative. None of them are quite that tricky. I kind of picked a bad example for that one, but you get the point.